Department of Anatomy, Rio Government Medical College, Rajkot welcomes you in the lecture series of X-ray abdomen. Today we are going to discuss about a special technique known as barium studies under headings of barium swallow, barium mill, and barium enema. Barium studies are generally performed to visualize and examine elementary tract by using the suspension of barium sulfate in water. Barium sulfate is a chemical with a high molecular weight. That's why it gives a radio opaque shadow on the fluoroscope. It is non-toxic to the body. It is not absorbed in the gastrointestinal tract. It is not soluble in water and can make suspension or immersion in water. Because of these characteristics, barium sulfate is used in barium studies. When barium passes through the lumen, it outlines the mucosal pattern that can be examined and radiographed. On the base of this principle, we can have uh, images for the gastrointestinal system and its lining wall. Barium swallow is generally used to evaluate the upper gastrointestinal tract like pharynx, esophagus and stomach to identify various abnormalities or pathologies in the pharynx, esophagus or the stomach. In this technique, we use 50% suspension of barium sulfate, which is swallowed by the patient two to three times, standing behind the fluoroscopic screen, and images are taken when the patient swallows the barium sulfate solution. Here we have two images. First image shows the barium present in the pharynx. This indicates the shadow of the barium. This is the valacula, and this part is the pariform sinuses. Second image shows the esophagus in the thoracic part. This is the outlining of esophagus. Because of the barium, we can see a radio opaque shadow. Esophagus passes through the diaphragm at this level and it enters in the abdominal area. In this image, we can identify esophageal sphincters. As you can see in the frontal view of the image, this is the trachea. At T4 level, it bifurcates into left bronchus and right bronchus. This is the arch of the aorta. This is the clavicle. In the oblique view, we can identify the constriction due to arch of aorta and a constriction due to left bronchus. The fourth constriction is at the point where esophagus pierces the diaphragm. And the first constriction is at the initiation of the esophagus. These four constrictions are normal anatomical constrictions in esophagus. This is the frontal view of cervical part of esophagus in barium swallow technique, where we can see the esophagus from the pharynx to the lower part of the cervical. This is the lateral view. Here we can see the normal curvatures and structures of esophagus. This is the thoracic part of esophagus. This is the frontal view. Again, we can see the normal curvatures of esophagus. This is the lateral view where we can see the thoric abdominal diaphragm, the lower end of the esophagus, 
the esophageal foramen through the toric abdominal diaphragm and this is the gastroesophageal junction and this shadow is the shadow of the stomach where we can see the air in the fundus of stomach also these are the several pathologies identified by barium swallow technique in the first image the lower part of the esophagus shows the bird beak appearance it is also known as red tail appearance this is the condition known as echalacia cardia in the second image we can see the dilated gastroesophageal junction this condition is known as barrett's esophagus in the third image we can see the constricted part of the esophagus this is because of the right aortic arch medium mill is generally used to evaluate the small and large intestine in medium mill the patient is kept mill by mouth for 10 to 12 hours then on the day of procedures 300 to 400 milliliter of the 5% barium sulfate suspension in water is given to the patient and successive radiographs are taken the sulfate medium reaches the ileocecal region in 3 to 4 hours it reaches to the hepatic flexor in 6 hours splenic flexor in about 9 hours descending colon in 11 hours sigmoid colon in 16 hours and usually evacuated in 16 to 24 hours these are the images of barium mill when barium enters the stomach it tends to form a triangular mass below the air of fundus it then descends as a narrow stream to the pyloric part of the stomach in addition the shape curvatures peristaltic waves and the rate of emptying of the stomach can also be studied the beginning of the first part of the duodenum shows a well formed duodenal cap produced by poorly developed circular folds of mucous membrane and protruding pylorus into it. The rest of the duodenum has a characteristic feathery or flocular appearance due to the presence of well developed circular folds. The circular folds are also known as conivent valves. This conivent valves starts appearing after the duodenum continues in the jejunum and reduces in number as it goes towards the ileum. The greater part of the small intestine presents a feathery or flocular appearance because of the presence of transverse mucosal fold and their rapid movement. This is known as conivent valves. However, the terminal part of the ileum is comparatively without such type of mucosal folds and does not show a such type of conivent valves. In this image, again, we can see the shadow of stomach, pyloric part duodenal cap second part of duodenum third part of duodenum with conivent valves here is the duodenal jejunal flexor this is the loop of the jejunum and this is the ilia our next technique is perium enema generally it is done to 
evaluate the large intestine. It can be done at single contrast method and double contrast method. Patient is given my laxatives two nights before the examination and plain water enema on the morning of the examination is given. Then two liters of barium sulfate suspension is introduced slowly through the anus till the barium starts filling the terminal ilia. Then fluoroscopic images are taken. Here we can see the first image where this is the transverse colon. This is the descending colon. And this is the ascending colon. This is the cecum. And this is the loop of intestine, small intestine. This image is taken before the barium in a Now, we put the rectal tube in the rectum and start entering the barium sulfate solution. As the solution passes first through the rectum, then sigmoid colon, then it will pass through the descending colon, frangus colon, ascending colon and will reach to the sigmoid. After passing the barrier, we can have images of the large intestine. As you can see here, the first is the rectum, can be seen in the pelvic region. Then a dilated structure, a sigmoid colon. This is the descending colon. This part is the splenic flexor branchless colon. Here is the hepatic flexor and this is the ascending colon. This image is taken by the double contrast method. In the next image we can identify the cecum which is the lowermost part of the ascending colon. Here we have focused on the cecum part where we can see the dilated part known as cecum. We can also identify the appendix, ileocecal junction and terminal part of the ilium. In barium enema, we cannot see the whole small intestine, while in barium mill, we can see the small intestine. In barium enema, large intestine is visible, that is also visible in some barium mill studies. Here we can compare the barium enema and barium male x-rays. As I mentioned, in barium enema, we can visualize only large intestine and small intestine generally does not appear in the barium enema studies. While in barium male studies, we can see the small intestine although large intestine may also be visible in barium mill studies. By these studies, we can identify any intestinal obstruction also. Here are some important interesting cases identified by the barium enema studies. In this image, you can see the there is no smooth lining and absence of prostrations of the large intestine. This shows the granular appearance also. This is because of the ulcerative colitis. So the whole colon 
without teeth is affected by an irregular mucosa with loss of normal host present markings. In this image, we can see the small evagination from the large intestine. These are the diverticulosis. So this was about barium studies. Thank you.